See, I'm cold with this, right? I had to get the hang of it. I just got to get, you know, you know, I ain't been here. I tell you, it's my second day, man, but it, it's easy. You can tell I'm going to be the coldest in a couple of weeks. You know what I'm talking about? Freeway. Welcome Freeway. to Houston. Freeway. Man, I started you training. <laughs> you was not just training, he was uh, driving trains. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My boy was driving trains. And then, you know, the genius had the idea. Hey, man, look, let's go to the park, man, and get some girls. Let's figure it out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to invite them. Let's say fun fitness. Let's post you did, it. Yeah, you know what though? You did tell me about the fun fitness, and you did make the name get better game. So I, I give you that. Genius! You How that. many geniuses moves I gotta? Oh man! I give you that, man. You see that? Hard. You see what happened with you, my friend? Every single day I just give you. Hey man, you should do this. You should do that. Yeah. So yeah. Then my boy left the trains, and now he started training full time. And now we need to get better gang, man. It's, That's what that is. It's worldwide, so. Look at that. Can't tell you what to see. I'm what, paranoid feeling is weird. Being the boss ain't easy. Might be courtside on your TV. Same night at the local bar, chilling with a star. How did all that come apart? I had a drop top L, dog, man. And it had bull horns on it. So everybody called me Boss Hog, because, you know, Dukes of Hazard. Boss Hog drove the white Cadillac with the bullhorn, so that's how that come about. And then we put outlaws on it, you know, just trying to make the shit, you know, different and, you know, and sound, you know, better. I just threw the outlaw on that shit, like Boss Hog Outlaw, I felt like it flowed. And then we went with the, uh, the badge shit, like the Harris County, like badge, we flipped that shit, like serving, you know, how the police serve and protect, we serve and collect, you know what I'm saying? like. Just flip that whole thing, like, so, you know, we just, you know, got with me, j Dog, Killer Calion, Sir Daly, Duty, um, uh, Black, who else? You know, like, you know, the whole crew. About I mean, Chris cool. Ward, Mug, you know, yeah. everybody, like, you know what I'm saying? It just, male, everybody, like, it turned into some whole other shit. Like, we got with Watts. We met Watts at the All Star. He was the DJ there. He said, "Come through." Me, he, little Mario, and we all went over there. And J Dog, <clears throat> Swisher Nine Eight was the first freestyle we did. That was in 1998. We got with Swisher Highs, blew it up, man. It went crazy. It was like for North Side, it wasn't no representation. Like Screw them had, you know, the South Side had DJ Screw. and we ain't had nobody on the North represent us. You know what I'm saying? So it it was a big it was a big, it was a major need for us or whatever. So, you know, we just, my whole perception from day one was, man, I got to represent for us. You know, like, man, we ain't got nobody represent for us. Like, you know, Kiki over there represent for the South Side, like Fat Pat them represent. So, <clears throat> and then I ain't want to be a dick rod either. So I was like, so I don't want to be out here with fades. <clears throat> and, you know, so we did the braids. I don't want to be, you know, do red like then we're going to do blue. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we represented us and, and did it our way. Swish a house, you know what I'm saying? And we, it, it, it caught fire, man. The people loved it. it. I think it just it went to a whole new level because it was CDs. We took it to. We hit the road with it, you know what I'm saying? So it turned into a whole business, you know. And we teen that. Well, I'm a teenager at the time, so. I'm in high school and understanding how this business work and you know, so once I, I learned the game like that, it was over, you know, I, I saw my value through selling mixtapes, seeing that, oh man, if I do a freestyle and it go, you know, I'm gonna make this much money. If it don't go, you know, whatever, like, or if I do a, 
a one freestyle, this make this much money. If I do an hour freestyle, it make this much money. You know what I'm saying? Then uh, let's hit the road and get out of these stores so we can sell these CDs too directly. You know what I'm saying? So now we turn it 50 cents of blank CDs into, you know, $15, you know? So early age, I could see the value in, in what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? I could see I'm getting paid for shows on other people's beats. I'm, I'm, um, <clears throat> I got stores all over the uh, fucking world, really. You know what I'm saying? Direct connect with them. And then, um, you know, it's like, like I say, doing a, a one freestyle versus a, a whole mixtape. You can see all that. So, and the music, that gave me a different mind frame than a regular normal artist. A regular normal artist, when they rap, their goal is usually let me do a demo and let me uh, get signed or whatever. Like, let somebody come find me, you know. <clears throat> That wasn't never my, what I was thinking. I was thinking, let me get this money. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I seen it. You know, like I say, that's like if you do something and you see the value, you see the money, you see how it works, you're going to be like, it's, it's going to turn into a hustle if you're a hustler. It got to the point where we was with Swisher House and it got crazy. Like, you know, like, I don't know. We couldn't get the orders right. You know, like, we just felt like we was being held back. I felt like I was being held back. And then it was a lot of frustration growing in between the group but with all of the different stuff going. It's a lot of people in the group, you know what I'm saying? A lot of personalities, like, you know, it was just all kind of stuff going on to where I had to just say, man, you know what, I got to get out here and stand on my own two feet. And that was just business. It wasn't nothing personal. Yeah, it wasn't nothing personal. I told Watts, like, if you know, uh, a lot of the hits people love came after I left, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Even after I had Boss Hog, I would still come over there and work with Swisher Highs and, you know, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't no beef or nothing. I just felt like I was trying to grow, you know what I'm saying? As an artist, as a really bigger than an artist, as a CEO, everything, you know, mm -hmm. I just wanted to take everything to the next level. So that's when Boss Hog got a lot started. You know, the chopping right, and it was horrible. It sounded horrible. Yeah. The chopping was horrible. Not like the DJ you just did. Right, because it was just like we were saying. We just trying some shit. Yeah. We not Michael Watts, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Who figured this shit out already? Who got the flow sounding immaculate in the club? Like I was shit sounding horrible because we don't know how to mix. You know what I'm saying? But shit, they were still selling. <laughs> they were still selling, so we ain't know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. Well, we had we had, well, at that point we had enough money to get to keep buying new equipment and keep getting better, you know what I'm saying? But uh, shit, at the end of the day, man, I just I just I'm fearless in this world, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I take chances, I take shots. You know, I feel like that's the way you get somewhere. That's the only way you're gonna be somebody. So you know, I'm never gonna uh, I'm never gonna not believe in myself to where you know I think that somebody else make me or something else make me, you know, that's just going to be my selfish confidence I'm going to always have in myself. You know, I'm always believe in myself. And because I always, and it, it ain't just about being arrogant or nothing like that. It's because I'm not scared of the hard work. Like, I like the hard work. Like, you know, and the, whatever it is, you know, I'm not cheating nowhere. I'm, I don't mind putting in the work. You know, it's, I, I like it. You know, like I say, I'm doing stuff I love to do, you know, so it ain't work to me like it don't feel like work to me and i'm so thankful you know i just wish i could keep doing this for the rest of my life i'd be good i put god first and went got it see i came in the game but i want to tell y'all what okay, to do it is the bottom you can do it from here from your belly button line uh, <laughs> what you doing now they just rich shit so i'm telling you no joke they do this rich nigga shit so i'm telling you you don't have the money too long not know this type of shit i'm fucking with that apple juice you want all that bitch loud Smell it out. You smell it before you drink it. Yeah. Smell it before you drink it. Hell, that shit. This 40 years of bottled cognac right. from the Netherlands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am right. bullshit. Hey, hey. Hold on, real talk. Yeah. Now. Real talk. <laughs> this the 20 prosperous years. Many more. We've been together. We stuck by loyalty. Got us here. Let's not let it go. You stayed real when all the niggas clowned up, Slim. Uh -huh. You stayed down, no weak shit, no punk shit. Uh -huh. We still here. Right. We can't be stopped. Uh -huh. We gonna keep getting money. We gonna keep living this boss life. Boss life. We gonna stay on these niggas' necks. Hey. You either with us or against us.
against us, hey. and we in this motherfucker, hey. nigga. Hey. Another hey. twenty to go. Hey. So hey. 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 Twirl it down. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what about a corner for the home? <laughs> no, this for my nigga Dre. So how, yeah, so how it come from a, it come from a freestyle like the chorus part. Now I gave it to Michael Watts, you know, and he and um and then we did put Mike Mike Jones on there and everybody. Who who uh? Now it was a at first it wasn't Mike Jones. It was a uh, it was Chameleon on there. Well, I don't know if Mike Jones was on it. I think Mike Jones was on the first one, but Chameleon there was on the first one, and it was a big time beat. And then they switched it over and did another beat. Michael Watts uh, and, and T. Ferris put it on a different beat, and that's the the hit song or whatever. <clears throat> but then after that popped, they started reaching out like, man. But matter of fact, I think I was already signed to Pharrell at that time when that shit popped. I was signed to Pharrell at that time. We was already we was already working not to not to uh, to Interscope, not to Pharrell. I was signed to Interscope, and then they was like, well, what we do over here is. We like to put the big producer with the rapper, you know, over here. So what they did was they got Pharrell to come check me out when he was on tour. And then we sat down, we sat down in his bus and he played some beats for me. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do that shit. So I started working with him. And then Still Tipping started popping, matter of fact. That's how it came. So after Still Tipping started popping, that because I was already damn near done with my album for the most part. So it was like, what's crazy is, it's like for the longest, I told you Chopped and Screwed was just that, you know, you had to be into that. So Houston music was a like certain corner of the world. Like, you know, everybody didn't listen to it. It was like certain motherfuckers listened to it. You know what I'm saying? The, so, the, so the Houston sound didn't go too much further past like outside of Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like it did randomly, but it wouldn't um, commercially, like, you know what I'm saying? Like popping on the radio and no shit. So when I got with, for real, we was just doing real shit, like shit like he do, you know what I'm saying? But what's crazy is that the sound of Houston popped after I was damn near yeah. done with my album, you know what I'm saying? The sound of Houston was finally commercially being accepted everywhere, you know? So it's like, damn, I, I did, I already platinum. And it was like on some Pharrell type vibe shit. But then that's when the Houston sound popped. So people was looking for me to do a whole Houston type of record at that at that time, but shit. So that's how that shit happened. So it was like basically I was with Interscope. They say we want to put you with a, a producer. You know, really with Interscope, what came was they gave me a they say we're gonna give you a label deal. It wasn't no artist shit, so that's what made me say, okay, cool. And they broke me off a, a nice chunk of check, you know what I'm saying? That made sense to me. I never did nothing in the, I never did no solo album. I said, fuck it. I'll still be able to own my masters to everything I do on the other side, independent. I'll still be able to do independent shit on the side. But my solo shit will be with a major. So I will use my solo shit as a promotional tool to promote myself and promote my brand that way I can do other shit independently and still eat off of it, you know what I'm saying? So it's basically I felt like I was sacrificing, you know, not really sacrificing because I could still make good money fucking with, with a major label, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to say, well, I, I want to be on a major label and still be able to do independent shit. That way I can eat on both ends. So That's a good way to think that was my way of thinking of it. You right. Your Texas to promote the exactly. Exactly. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do the major with my solo, and then still be able to do my independent shit." So they was cool with that. They was like, "We don't give a damn about that." So that's what made me want to mess with them. Yeah. And then, like I say, they said, "Well, hey, we want to put you with a big producer because that's what we do over here." And Pharrell played some shit. You know, Pharrell the goat, Pharrell, man. Yeah. He the goat. Shit. You know. So when he played that shit, we was in there. That's the best album I ever made to me. Like. That's the most fun I ever had, you know, making the album. Just because of the process mainly. Like it was real it was a real never have I made an album on that level. Like it's a new experience for you. It was a great experience for me to see how it really supposed to be. Yeah, we was in different cool. cities, yeah. you know, I never do that on no other album. That's the only album I ever did. You know, my boy, he put me on with uh Gwen Stuff Funny, 
put me in a room with her. That was a crazy experience, you know what I'm saying? Pop Man, you know, I'm a hood dude. Just think I'm Slim Thug with a 10 XT on. <laughs> exactly. And hey, they drive me off in the room with Gwen stuff funny, bro. That 10 XT you had that you had on when you gave Beyonce that hug. Man, Boy, it was about three, man, and, a, and I had probably had like a 46 on in jeans, and it was like, yes. if I had a 44, them all was tight. I ain't like it. Yeah, so you went from the big thugs to big thugs to fat thugs. Right. So now, nah, really, that wasn't really what it was. On a cool, it was just, we was on that tall T baggy era. Like, it was just dumb shit. It looked so crazy. I like, damn, when I win an award, I got to look like that. Like, with Beyonce, like... That's something you want to put up on your wall, mm -hmm. you know. I probably still need to post that on my wall, but think about that, though. The time you're on the stage winning an award with Beyonce, you got a big 10XT on and some baggy ass. <laughs> Walk by. It was funny because I didn't think I didn't think we was finna win shit. Like, they ain't tell me, yo, you winning tonight. So I'm in the audience. I'm chilling, bro. Like, And they're like, you won. So I'm walking. Do you know it's Jay-Z? Do you know this one? They, he, he was the head of Def Jam. So I had to walk by, and my tall T with his wife, Jay Z, Nas, uh, I think it was fabulous. Like all the top New York rapping niggas or whatever, like everybody. You know, I had to walk past them niggas with a tall T. I'm there, and they was like, this country ass nigga just won a war with Beyonce. I can't believe this shit. I thought they were like, what the fuck? But anyway, man, that was a hell of an experience. That was a hell of an experience, man. That shit there, man. And just to have another reason why I did the Sugar Daddy Slim is because I noticed through analytics now, since we have that type of technology available, I was like, man, it's 64% men follow me and only 36. How can I balance this out a little more? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's when I came up with, man, I need to get, you know, and, I, and you know what happened? You gotta, eva you gotta grow and evolve and get past all that and learn how to talk, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Slick talk. So that's where I'm at. I, I need them female fans. I need my, my ladies to be at my show. I wanna pull up and be uh, Sugar Daddy Slim and have nothing but females in my, I wanna do like, who was that did that, that tour with nothing but girls? Mm -hmm. Somebody did, a, a, a one of them kids like Chris Brown or somebody, like did some shit where only girls could go to this show. Somebody did some shit like that. Well, that's who I want to be. I want to have them That'd shows. Be new. That'll be something new. Sugar Daddy Slim is for the ladies. Yeah. 57 Bel Air, 59 Cadillac, 64 Lincoln, uh, 74 Caprice, 87 Monte Carlo, 96 Impala, um, 95 Benz, uh, 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 Hellcat, Escalade, Truck, Wraith. That's 11 cars. And, and I got two motorcycles. I got a, a Road King. I didn't know you had two. I and a Road Glide. Black. I didn't even know that. What you talking about? The black one with the, with the suede. What you mean? That's the only one I knew you had. I didn't know you had two. What you mean you don't know I got two motorcycles? So you got two bikes? Yes. I thought you had one. I didn't know you had how you don't know I got a new bike? I thought that was shop bike, I guess. I don't know. No, the new bike? I ain't know. That's my bike. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Every single fucking day I'm with this dude and he don't know me. That's what I tell you. What I tell you. What I tell you. I say people who, that's, what, that's my thing. People, nobody knows me. Hey, man, let's go take a look at this car. I realize that. <laughs> the Caprice, man. Actually, I just put these lights in there, but I don't like them. They're gonna have to change that shit to chrome, so I don't like them. I'm a, see, I still, see, this is what give me something to do when I can have, I can still do shit. And, like, I don't wanna just, like, this one here, I can't touch it. It's done, you know what I'm saying? Everything done. The other ones, you know, it give me something to do. I can, man, do a little here one day, you know, do a little there. But it's lit, though. The Caprice, like a spaceship in the inside, you know what I'm saying? I like to make my old schools new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Modern like, in yeah, I like to make mine modern. Like this push button start. I ain't been here in I don't know how long. Why I'm capping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that easy. It ain't no big deal. It's just simple shit. I love the truck, man. 
The truck is getting all of my attention at, at this time you right now. You got the truck because you drove my truck, I think, though. That's exactly what happened. I really? drove your truck. So now we even. Right. But that's like two things that you didn't do. I don't know. I don't know that's if like that's the same. Now, all right, so I had a Ram back in the day. And then uh, I had got rid of it. And then I, I, never, I haven't had a truck in years. So I was like, man, I need some type of truck. I'm tired of calling Mills when I need some move or something. So I drove your truck and I said, man, I got to give me a truck. So that's what I got for my birthday. Um, at the same time, you can't take credit for it because you also got yourself an Escalade like I have. So yeah, so. That's like a universal <laughs> car, boy. That ain't no. Nah, that's, you seen my black on black Escalade, you got one. <laughs> anyway. Exactly. Yeah, that was my birthday gift, man, last year, man. Shout out my boy Dallas. Right, yeah, I had to get some work done to it. Um, threw the choppers on it, you know what I'm saying? Gave it that, you know, chopping on blades, real 1995 vibe. You know what I'm saying? Ain't do much to it yet. So I'ma just have fun and, you know, flip that. The Hellcat, in case I need to get Ghost. You know, I see how it matched the truck. I made the truck match the Hellcat. You know, the tires and all. Yeah, so then we got the nine six the nine six impala. You know, everything on forges. You know what I'm saying? Then we got the sixty-four Lincoln. It's on airbags on the ground. Suicide doors. Then we got the um the rolls, you know what I'm saying, the wraith on four G's. Yep. Then we got the motorcycle, Milton didn't know it's mine. <laughs> Oh look, bro, look like this lid came off. I think it did. Hell yeah. It came off of this. What the fuck? Yeah, but this the uh Nah, it ain't gotta be on there, but yeah. This the motorcycles. Right. I mean I just got this one. I rode it yesterday though, from nineteen sixty to here. Uh, I rarely ride that one. I ain't rode that one in a while. But yeah, uh, the Escalade, my brother in it. Yeah, man, like I say, man, I'm j I just be having fun. This house used to be white. I painted it black. Of course, everybody was probably mad, like, what the hell? But I think it came out dope. So then, also in the backyard. You ever go to that part right there with all the equipment at, the gym stuff and all that? I'll, not you often. Visit that area not not often because I work out with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all some real game right now. Y'all ready to wake up or y'all want to stay asleep? Okay, in Texas, it's a country state. It's, everything is based on country if you think about it. Earth tone. They like the browns and the country chairs and you know if you go to furniture stores, it's gallery. It's our country. That's not what I'm into. I don't. I don't. Want, I mean, I'm a country boy. But I like different vibes, and I felt like I need a Miami vibe out here. So as you can see, you can't see out here, it's super bright. The floor is all white. The pool black, you know what I'm saying? I came up with, I always wanted to be, uh, well, Scarface is one of my favorite movies. So I always wanted my own, The World Is Yours uh, statue. That was like one of my, I'm, since I can remember, I wanted a slab and a World Is Yours statue with a waterfall, you know. So I finally was able to achieve that. Man, that shit came from China. Ben had the slabs. It came right. That that statue came from China. I had to trust people who I didn't know. I had to send them money that I didn't know I was gonna get back or not, or if it was all a scam. They told me it would be done in a certain time. It wasn't done, so I ain't know if they was getting over on me. They kept honest. Sent my product. You know, I got my statue. So here it is, man. You know what I'm saying? What about the bricks? I hear the bricks. That was like that. It was. It was. It was Earth tone. All this was, like I say, it was all. You know, like the. You know what I'm saying, but that go with the statue with the world is yours. Yeah. And the bricks and all. You know, they got the. People just looking at them like they just bricks, but they don't know it's. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be bricks, bricks. All that, you know, white bricks. And then I did this deck, DeLorean, uh, DeLorean decks. He came through, hooked me up with this deck. So you know, I just wanted to get my crib a Miami type of vacation vibe. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. I got my backyard. Really, I don't even come here a lot no more. I got a spot downtown, you know, because it's kind of, you know, it's this for my 40s when I find my wife and I want to, you know, 
When I, I'm right now, I'm looking, so I'm sowing my raw oats at the time. That's gonna be Queen Sugar Baby, right? There. Right, oh, Queen. She ain't, have, she ain't gonna even have that the Sugar queen, Baby title. The Queen, nah, she ain't gonna be no. She gonna be the wife. Okay. The wife is gonna be at the crib. So when yeah, we gonna do all that. We gonna get married and all that in the 40s. But right now, I'm sowing my raw oats. So I got my apartment downtown, and I'm just out there, you know, having fun. The reason I came out here is because my my uh. Son moved in with me at about 12 years old, and I used to live downtown. I was really living my dream at that time. I was living downtown, had a townhouse paid off. I ain't had no bills, I was just happy. So uh, my oldest son moved in with me, so I felt like I had to get him some type of, you know, uh, he was out there playing basketball in that little driveway. I said, man, I need to put him in a local school and you know, get him a basketball court where he can play. So yeah, we moved out skill, here so he can have a chance yeah. at developing his skills. You know what I'm saying? So we moved out here and he played a million games out here. That's the end you play on? Yep. With the logo? Yep. You know, I'm dunking all day. Uh, about, yeah, that's a, that ain't a 10 foot goal. I'm cold though. I can do either one. You know what I'm saying? You know that about me though. You know, I told my ACL and my MCL, which retired me out the game, sadly to tell you. But before that, the thugger roll is worldwide. Then Google that. Google the thugger roll. Yeah, it's vicious. Boys, can, travel every time on that. boys could see me. They say that about James Harden now. But they say that about James Harden. But yeah, I ain't you know you know I ain't never had no shot. I always just hit him with that thugger roll and lay up. It was 100 percent. What about the racer, man? They know about the racer, Defense is immaculate. Ain't nobody, you know, I'm the rebound block king. Undisputed, you know what I'm saying? I got video footage of me throwing all your favorite rappers shots if you want to. We're going to put that on here. Yeah, we're going to find that. Let's find that. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> Propane, <laughs> Michael Artis, uh, yeah, all that. Who else? Maybe even Kirko, I think I threw his ball. I don't know. You're blessed. I pray for your best, but all the stress. I have a piece out here, you know what I'm saying? I come out here, I smoke me one, have me a beer. You boss know, beer. boss beer, of course, we got our own beer. You know what I'm saying? And then just big kick it, you know. Ain't nothing like this. You ever watch some games over there sometime? I do. And then on Fridays, it's, it's firework night, so I get to see like I level fireworks on Friday. It'd be lit. It'd be fun. I love this place though. For real, real life, I don't go home. I come here, I stay here. It's too easy. It's convenient. It's too convenient. You know what I'm saying? Just buy everything. This is really all I need, shit on the cool. What um person, this is where I was before like I told y'all, I was downtown. I, I had my townhouse paid, I was done. But like I say, my son moved in with me. I wanted to give him a place to stay where he can hoop. So I moved and got all that. But I think I belong downtown. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't even go home. I got to force myself to go home. So, yeah. You talking about your uh, your social club. So, eventually, let's say if you do get that thousand members. Or right. Whatever, or yeah. Not with the members so much, but you're going to try to have chapters in different, different right. cities. Every, different I want to get it all over the world, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But then I want it to be something different, though. I want it to be bigger than just being a, a social club. I want it to have like laws and everything like I know other clubs got laws by too laws, yeah by yeah. laws exactly but uh I want it to be strong as in far as the giving back and doing stuff in the community and you know what I'm saying and, and being something that uh something that stand up in today's day like something that's real like looked upon as man I want to be I want to be you know a part of that club because it ain't for everybody it's gonna be private <laughs> It ain't for everybody else. So you're problem. saying you want to be big on the giving back. The house had the I want it to be. Early. I want it to be real bosses who really trying to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like really trying to come together and do something. Because it ain't even got to, like I say, it ain't going to be nothing that, that 
you're gonna have to have a lot of money or something to be in. You can be anybody and be in the club. You know, at any level and be in the club. But we're gonna be serious about what we do though. It's gonna be something live. It's gonna be, I'm talking about like building stuff in the community, you know, all kind of stuff, you know. I just feel like that's something I love to do forever. And outside of that, the cars and the, the bikes, just some brotherhood, you know, with yeah. events, stuff to do in the city. You know, I want to be able to bring different uh, events to the city through this, you know, all kind of stuff. Like, not all the time, just maybe once a month do an event for the, you know, the people who are in the club. You never know who might catch on to it. Right. You city know. might get involved. Exactly. You, know, you know, just something to do, man. Something to do where people can come together on some positive stuff. Yeah. You know, whether it be we partying or we going out to the hood and giving back and doing something or, you know, just, just stand up stuff like that. Whether we going mentor kids, young kids who don't have fathers, whatever it may be, you know, like all kind of stuff. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I thought this was going to be the easiest one. This turned out to be the kind of like. Yeah. Kind of like because I thought Cause I was Because you don't know me. <laughs> That's what it is. Like I say, you don't know me. This was you know? kind of hard. It was tougher than I thought, man. Yeah. But really, it's just us kicking back, talking about old yeah. times and whatnot. But um, now this is a good thing, though, dog. Yes, How you sir. feel about life right now, though? I'm cool. I ain't going to lie. I feel like I'm missing a lot of like family and all that. Though. Like, you know, I've been a player so long. I feel like I'm missing that part of life being uh, 38. I feel like I'm supposed to have a, you know, a family. My kids are with uh, with their mothers and their families. You know what I'm saying? I kind of want to experience coming into 40. You know, I might try that. Yeah. Just because you know it ain't really a lot of foundation around. I want to make sure that I'm hustling for something. You know, what am I hustling for? Who I'm gonna give all this shit to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What is my legacy going to be? You know, that's what type of mind frame yeah. I want to grow into. And then also, this is a transition in time in my life where I want to do more stuff outside of music. You know, that's, I'm really making sure I do more stuff outside of music, you know what I'm saying, that I can do forever. That's why that club, that's something I, I can do forever. I love cars. I love motorcycles. You know, we can do that forever, you know. I want to open up, like I tell y'all, a bar, restaurant type of thing. Just different stuff. I know you want to do something with smoking involved. Definitely want to. I'm definitely a weed ambassador, and definitely got a lot of plans to do that when they when they get legal out here. So you know, now I'm just waiting. Good, and that's a good place for you to sit out here and think, man. You can sit out here and look at all of this. And you ain't know, man. In the morning, wake up, you see all that. See, I can't even sleep good. I sleep bad. I sleep. I go to sleep maybe at sometimes on a regular weekday. I go to sleep at 11 and wake up at three and then go to sleep and wake up at six, like I'd be on and out. So I see people heading to work, you know what I'm saying? You can see everybody in traffic. You can see the sunrise, the sunset, you know, it's fun. That's crazy though, man, because if we look, I'm not sure which direction, but I think Fifth Ward over there. Yep. And a little bit past that, the phone said. Yep. We ever thought 30 years ago, you'd be over here. Right, over looking, there. Over, looking over there. All your accomplishments. I can see it. I can see all the way yeah. to the back out there. Yeah, yeah, man, whatever. You see how far you came, kind of. Yes, sir. It's a blessing. I That's what I nice say. That little protege going to, right. the, into the deep, deep hood. Of exactly. The homestead doing a show with some shit. Is that Greens Point out there? Yeah, I don't sure I know this shit. I don't, I don't I, this is 45 right here going up, I know for sure. So it's like, yeah, it's real. It's clear today, too. I mean, you can see. The temperature was just a little warmer. It'll yeah, I pull that drop top out and you can see the county, the courthouse. No, you're not one to be there. Child support courthouse. I done been in all that. I done been through all them stages. <laughs> yeah, we here now. We looking down on all that shit. That's what's up, man. Uh, yes, sir. What else you got coming? Like anything else you want to say? You want to? Man, Sugar Daddy Slim, February 14th. Me and Boston George, January 18th. We dropping our mixtape. Big bad Boston in the boss, you know what I'm saying? I plan on working, like I say, working harder than I ever worked in every area from fitness, you know, from the gym side to uh, music, putting out music, to doing stuff that's I don't I never did before, you know, challenging myself to try new things this year. I want to travel. I want to get out of here at least once a month, you know. Like I say, I miss so much stuff working all them years, them 20 years, I want to, you know, get some of that back. Some of them good times. So, there it is. What's up? Uh, All right. And we out. And there it is. <laughs>
Yes, sir. You gotta get these blessings. So tired of stressing. Learning new lessons. Plenty questions. It's time for testing.